Hello, and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. Today, we have a very, very, very special guest in the house. And before I get into it, if there is any ladies out there that have been contemplating whether or not like sales is for you, and especially with having circumstances that sometimes feel like a little bit out of our control, whether you are a mom wanting to find a new way to be able to take care of your family or whether you've been going to school for a long time and you're looking for something new to get into. I think there's so many incredible women out there that are pioneering what it actually means to create new paths for themselves, to create new abilities to make money, new abilities to nurture and develop other women around them. And we are really creating something special for society. So today I wanted to welcome in Lori Richardson. Lori is absolutely an incredible woman and she is a mentor to so many people out there. She's a sales coach at Harvard Business School. I know that after 15 years in B2B sales, Lori founded Score More Sales to help companies, you know, grow through strategy grow the revenues through strategy. Um, She noticed a massive lack of women in the B2B sales space, and she created Women Sales Pros, which is a community that showcase experts and offers exclusive and inclusive sales team consulting. She also has a new book, which is She Sells Attract, Promote, and Retain Great Women in B2B Sales. She hosts the award-winning podcast, Conversations with Women in Sales, which is how I found her because she's absolutely epic. And she's a third year Salesforce top sales influencer. And again, a sales coach for Harvard Business School. Lori, I just wanted to bring you up here. Such a pleasure having you on here today. I know that you are having such an incredible story of how you got here today. And I just thank you for your time. I know that there's women out there that maybe one day was in your position when you first started. Could you just give us a little background on your story and how you got here? Yeah, Uh, thanks, Kayla. First of all, it's really a pleasure to be here and to meet you. I'm excited to talk with you. I started my sales career years ago in my early 20s when I became a single mom and I could not afford to continue my teaching job. I was working with young children and it was pretty much minimum wage. And and I just realized, you know, I wanna do something that my male counterparts make a good living supporting their families. I need to support my family. So I looked into a lot of different things. And then I realized that I, I had grown up in a family run business and I knew about sales. So when I was exposed to technology and the fact that there were huge opportunities in technology selling. I jumped at the chance and I started on straight commission with no salary uh, mm-hmm. within some time. I mean, if you're making minimum wage, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not much of a stretch to, to go on straight commission. Yeah. Um, but in short order, the, the guys there told me, you know, there's more money here in crumbs than in most most careers and Mm. they were right and i i got in and i worked really hard i had to because i was a single mom and i i did well and and you know stayed in the industry been in technology you know for years and years now wow um first of all it takes a lot of dedication to be willing to do whatever it takes and then do something new and continue to do that because what i've noticed i don't know if you've noticed this before Sometimes when you hop into something new like sales and it's hard and it's difficult, there can be like months where it's up and the months where it's down. And sometimes you possibly want to like quit or not think that you have what it takes. So I'm, I'm sure that there is some type of story in there somewhere because you're brand new. You, I think you mentioned that you were a single mom starting in sales. Like, can you get us, give us an insight on like the beginning and how you felt like before you really started to actually like fully feel like you got it and this is something that is your career path like when was that moment for you yeah I I was scared for sure but I went to a company where I really respected the leadership Mm -hmm. at least the local level leadership that I saw and my peers were both men and women it was a really great first job for me because it was not um like a a bro club or anything like that it was just a bunch of young people And we were really excited about helping our customers. And there were future companies where it was not that case, but I loved this first uh, stop for me. 
And I just knew that the people around me were doing well. And so that I knew I would do well eventually if I just watched what they were doing. Hmm. You know, success leaves clues. That's what hmm. Tony Robbins says. And and so I looked for success in, in what other people were doing. And I just modeled that. And eventually, you know, it all came came true for me. So I would say I started very scared, but uh, within, you know, months, uh, I was feeling pretty comfortable, pretty good. Hmm. And now you help other people that are in sales as well, right? Like, can you just give us a little bit of insight for the people that are listening? Like what exactly you do and how you support people? I know you speak, you know, with people in in colleges and stuff as well. So can you just give us a little bit of insight so we can kind of understand like how much you're impacting people that are newer in sales and who are learning? Well, I keep very busy. I have a sales strategy firm, as you mentioned, Mm Scoremore Sales, where I consult with companies, but people that, you know, aren't investing in that. uh, I do other things like I do speak at colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. I have a group called Women Sales Pros where we have 50 women sales experts and we champion their success as well. Mm-hmm. So these 50 women model the behavior of successful women in sales as well. So I, mm-hmm. I feel like I've tried to expand myself yeah. through them. And, um, and, and, you know, any chance that I have, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to someone locally. I, I moved a year and a half ago to Arizona so in oh, my wow. community, I, I work with a startup community. And so I'm going to take a day next week. But, you know, you do that. You give back because um, I've been given many things. And I, I've been I've been given the, the best gift, which is knowing wonderful, amazing people. Mm-hmm. And and I, I just love our industry. And I, I love business to business selling because it is it has unlimited potential for people. Mm hmm. Where, where in um, Scottsdale, or sorry, where in Arizona are you in? I'm in Tucson. Tucson. Okay, great. I just moved to Arizona as well. So if you have any oh, tips great. on the heat, help a girl out. Because <laughs> it's my first summer here. Yeah, we'll have to catch up. We'll do lunch sometime. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, I want to talk about the 50 women because I feel like sometimes in life we see an issue and yet we don't do anything about it. And it sounds like my experience of what you just said was like, hey, I'm noticing a lack of women leaders that are in sales and I'm going to pioneer uh, a group of women that hold the same standard as you do, right? And to be able to do something. So like, how did you come up with the idea? How did you pick those women? What are you guys doing to make an impact? Yeah, I actually had a mentor. Her name is Jill Conrath. Okay. And Jill Conrath has written four books about sales, starting with one called Selling to Big Companies mm. that I think it was probably back in 2010 or something. And she was a giant in, you know, for me, she was a woman that was up on the main stage, like the only woman. And she wanted to see other women get up on main stages at wow. sales conferences at, and company events. And so she uh, started the group and she handed it over to me later and I rebranded it. So it's really credit to her. She's still a good friend of mine. Mm. And um, we, you know, in addition, I mean, I do a podcast through Women's Sales Pros, like you mentioned, Conversations with Women in Sales. I, I also do events periodically and I used to do them in Boston when I lived there and I did some virtual events called the She Sells Summit. And there are a lot of recordings there at SheSellsSummit.com, which are free for anyone to listen to with some great women speaking. Mm. So, yeah, you're right. I want to champion women and get women's voices out Mm. there because we have something to say. And if you're a woman coming up in sales, you need to hear other women talking and not just the guys. Guys are great, but there's uh, we bring a different perspective, a different energy yeah. Uh, and different ideas and it's important to share those and uh, yeah and I I completely agree with you I feel you're spot on with that we're different <laughs> I think that sometimes at least for me in my experience like when I first started in sales I was in a bro club I was with all guys on the floor and I felt like I was trying to keep up with them and by doing what they were doing and it was very much like hit the numbers hit the numbers Um, I was a single mom as well, you know, having my daughter at home and I'm like, man, like there'd be points where I would look at the phone and I'm like, 
I don't want to pick this thing up. I don't want to call anybody, um, even though I know that's the only way for me to take care of my kid. Like, it would just make me sick. Like, I didn't want to do it. Um, what was your space like navigating that? Because, you know, you said it was a little bit different. You weren't in a bro club. You did have a woman mentor. Like, I always had craved that, like, having somebody in sales above me that could teach me that was a woman. What was your experience with her? Yeah. Like, what perspective did she give you that was different than maybe, like, what average... Um, people or that are women in sales typically get without that? Well, I didn't get that female mentor until after I was out of um, my sales role and had my own company. So okay. I will say it's been the bros uh, the whole time. But mm -hmm. I, I had talked about how my first job was great. Now, the second job that I took, a lot of my male counterparts went to this other company because it paid better and had better opportunities. It was bigger and they had never hired a woman in outside field sales, which is wow. what we were doing at the time. So we went out and called on companies and I had to go through hoops, you know, to get hired there. Mm. And I didn't have company leadership on my side. And ultimately they kind of stabbed me in the back and I left and went to a competitor and took my clients with me. Mm. So, um, because I, you know, they didn't, they, it, it, I guess it was a bro culture. It wasn't like I've seen in some tech companies, um, in the last five, six years, um, where it's just, uh, there've just been some, some women I've talked to that have just been in some horrendous situations. I, I was, pretty well respected because I closed a big deal at my, at that second company within about 90 days. Mm. So I, I had, you know, my, that talks when you can close business, people will respect you. And it's, yeah. it's good to kind of keep quiet until you've kind of earned the right to speak. And that, that's the way I felt back then in, in my role. But after that, I was always treated as a peer in the different companies I went to because I had a good rate track record yeah so that's you know that's what I love about sales is that the numbers talk for you yes right if you do if you do your work and you close business you don't need anybody speaking on your behalf the numbers do it for you yes uh, do you feel like sometimes as ladies we have to prove ourselves um and in that regard like I think sometimes it's easier maybe just to get a meeting or to get in the door but to earn the respect of your colleagues or earn the respect of like you know, the people over you that sometimes you do have to prove yourself and as fast as possible to be able to get that respect? For me, that's what sales is all about anyway. Yeah. It, it's, you know, doing the, to do the job, it's not gray. It's black and white. You mm -hmm. either close business or you don't. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I mean, there could be a number of reasons. It could be, you know, things that are out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, but once you are in a good company with a good product or service to represent, and, you know, then it's just up to closing the business. And for me, that that was how I proved myself. I yeah. feel I had a chip on my shoulder because I was a single mom and yeah. people expected less of me. Um, and I think they still do in business in a lot of ways is that if if someone has a child or children, yeah. if it's a woman, you know, she's either going to leave to have a kid or, or she has kids and you know, it's women can be treated differently, which is really sad because women are great producers. As a mom, you were probably like me, Kayla, where you come in and you get the work done because you don't have time to screw around. Yeah. And that's what parents do, right? We yeah. get the work. We're not there goofing off. I'm not there to chit chat. Yeah. I'm there to build business, hit my numbers, get my paycheck, yeah. you know, and start over the next quarter. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, Lori, I, I would really love, if you can, you don't have to pin put names or situations, but you mentioned some horrendous situations, right, with women. And yeah. um, if you could, you know, because I, I hear them all the time. People email me all the time about things. Um, I think the worst one I've heard recently was um, there was a woman that was working, you know, at this plant. She's like top of sales and she was um, hired to hire more sales reps, more women sales reps and huge corporation in the email in the email, printed an email, it said that she needed to hire who was most uh, fuckable, was the words, right? Um, in terms of how they looked, right? And um, she ended up going and I think like sued and like got, you know, hush, hush money. And I'm bringing this up because she told me yeah. about it years and years later after the fact. 
Um, but, and I'm not saying names or anything, but stuff like that happens all the time. Would would you mind sharing, um, like any story or anything that you've possibly heard Uh, that, you know, just so we can bring some light to these dark situations. Yeah. Women who are fired when they're out of maternity leave, for Mm. example, which is illegal, I believe, probably in every state, if not federally mandated, I'm not Mm -hmm. sure, but companies have found a way to do that, uh, or fired once they return. Mm. Um, I talk to women who, who their boss harasses them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've talked to women who are, you know, just, just super stressed because of the environment. They don't feel comfortable. I, I know of a woman who was being sexually harassed, mm. uh, multiple, actually several women that I've talked to and, um, over just recently, I would say I've, many over the years and, you know, these are things that men don't have to deal with typically. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's really important that male leaders mm. get some understanding about the things like this that go on and that it's really good to talk to the women on your sales team and ask them how they're doing and ask them how things are going, what they need to, to do their job even better, ask people, don't yeah. just assume, well, nobody's complaining because someone might be afraid to, to speak up and, yeah. and also to stick up for women when, if they say an idea, this happens, still happens, it's happened for years when someone says an idea in a meeting and then uh, a guy will say that idea a little later in the conversation, people like him saying it yeah and not like oh yeah that was Kayla's idea I'm glad you like that um mm. maybe Kayla can say a little more about it mm. and to, to you know to this is what men can do to support women and women can do that other women can do that for the women in the room too mm, that's so beautiful that's so funny that you just said that Lori. that actually happened to me a week ago a week ago um I I was having a meeting with and I'm not going to say who it's I was having a meeting with a department in in our company um, about like, you know, SOPs and like what we need to do for this thing. And somebody walked into the room and was like, oh, my God, like, guys, what a great idea to have a meeting with Kayla, like way to take initiative and walked out. And in my head, I'm like, this was my idea to have this meeting. It was my idea for them to sit down and for us to do this. Like, it's my idea to go to the SOPs. Like, when was it their idea and great initiative? And like... (laughs) You know, I'm like, what it, What happened here? Like, this is me. Like, you know, and it's hard because I don't want to be like, uh, hello, like this was me to get credit for it because it makes you feel like, well, why would you say that that's you being insecure and like getting credit? You know, like, is it worth it to say something? You know, and then at the same time, it's like, uh, yes. hey, no. <laughs> I know. It's important, though. It's yeah. important. It's important to find ways to say it that don't offend, you know, like, one thing I've learned about, I think this is true of everyone, but the men that I have talked to is that, you know, men don't like to be told off in front of other people, Yeah. right? Probably no one does. It's probably yeah. a safe thing to say. So it's really good to talk to someone outside of a meeting. However, if someone says something really inappropriate, you can't just talk about it later. It, it's It's okay to say, you know, I, I'm happy to talk about this one-on-one later, mm-hmm. but, you know, we need to think about some of the things that we're saying in the room mm. because the other people need to hear that, you know, it's, you know, that That's your wrong. reaction, because for the longest time I would have thought, you know what, I'll just talk to that person outside of the meeting, but all the people in the room figure, well, Lori didn't say anything, so it must be fine. Right. Mm, so that's why it's that's so good to, to think about it and then to say things in a very constructive way. Like, is there another choice of words we could use? Um, or, you know, is there another direction we could go? Could we not talk about that topic right now? Mm-hmm. You know, well, I worked and the guys would come in on Monday and talk about their dates and, you know, go into detail and stuff that I, I didn't want to hear any of that kind of stuff. So, it's just really good for people to understand what's acceptable and, and the leader sets a tone on that. Yeah. Well, you're right in terms of it. That's definitely a leadership thing always, you know, so yeah. let's talk about leadership. What does it mean to be a good leader as a sales rep? Because I think it starts from the inside out, right? It's not necessarily relying on leadership to like lead us, but leading from the inside also helps change the culture, change everything else. I know that you work with, you know, a lot of college students that are in sales programs. 
Do you guys talk about that? Or like, what does that even sound like or look like? Yeah, I've always thought that you demonstrate leadership to others mm. and that you don't have to have a title to be a leader. And, and an example is that my son played division one college ice hockey. Wow. And in his senior year, he had three roommates and all three of his roommates were either the captain of the team or the, uh, the assistant captain. Wow. And he was the fourth guy. He, he didn't have any letter yeah. on his, uh, on his jersey so he he became the guy that opened the door for all the players when they came off the ice you know he on his own he found a way to be a leader mm -hmm. and he was that guy that always you know tapped everybody on the helmet when they came off the ice and I was really it just really stood out for me watching that because I thought yeah, he doesn't have a title, but he's he became he found a way to become a leader. And when you're in sales, it's like you own your territory. You know, you're the CEO of whoever you call on. And I've always felt that way, and I've always loved that about sales. So I guess I've always felt like a CEO, um, even when I you know had one building as my territory in downtown Seattle. So, um, but however you do it, you take on that that leadership role, and you 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 demonstrate through your actions and then other people learn from you. Mm, yeah. And I uh, absolutely agree with you in terms of <laughs> you don't get a title and that makes you a leader. All right. What is the saying where like, if you turn around and there's people behind you, that means that you're the leader versus just commanding it. Um, I think that leadership is important in the office because the way like Michael Jordan on his team, like he demanded a type of excellence where like you came onto that team and like, hey, this is going to be how we roll. You demand it. And I think that there is really, really powerful people that can do that in a sales environment, not like an egotistical. I think that that's too much when somebody's like all ego and all about themselves. Like there's something really, really powerful about somebody that's hitting the top of their numbers. Like they're like the person you want to watch and they're not walking around acting like they're tough, like, you know. They're walking around asking right. how they can support somebody or like listening to someone else. I think that you can learn something from everyone. Like even if you're the top sales rep, maybe somebody that's brand new has a better way to overcome an objection or a better way to prospect than you. And you wouldn't ever know if you just stopped and asked a question and communicated with that person. And, and lastly, like you feel more confident in yourself when you're in integrity with yourself. If you say you're going to follow with this person and you don't do it, you start doubting yourself more and more and more. You know, so it's really about keeping your word and, and being excellent within yourself that is going to start showing on the outside of you because it starts on the inside out, you know. Um, but I, I do I do want to understand just a little bit more about these these people that you're teaching. Can you give us insight? Like how, how often do you help these people in college? Like what do those sessions look like? Like where do they learn from you? Where do they normally go to go find jobs? What does that look like? I'm on the advisory board for the Sales Education Foundation, wow. and that's a group uh, that looks at all the different university sales programs around the country. And if they have enough going for them, like they have so many classes and they have competitions or they're involved in competitions, mm. then they kind of get their stamp of approval. Mm. And I, I've spoken at a number of those schools around the country, mostly just as a guest speaker. Uh, mm. Most college class classes have speakers that come in. Here in um, Tucson, I'm going to do that with University of Arizona cool. as well. And um, ASU up in your neck of the woods, yeah. they have a really great sales program. Wow. So you, you should check that out. You could probably be a speaker, I bet. And, um, you know, I, ju I do it virtually. And I just want the, the women in the class to know that sales is an admirable profession and I want the men to see more women in sales roles as well, because women are still underrepresented at, at every level mm -hmm. in business or business selling. And the higher you go, the less women there are. Mm -hmm. And I think that women, there was a study that showed that we closed almost 11 percent higher than guys. You know, and I always talk yeah, about this research. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that women, we try to pretend like we're men in sales and therefore we don't like use the natural assets we have. Like women are so much naturally more nurturing, empathetic. We, we listen to try to understand. We're so curious. We're like always trying to understand. We have that sixth sense. Like we're very intuitive. If somebody like leans back and in business meeting or they look to the side, we're like something's wrong. Like we pick up on it so fast 
you know, over men is what yeah. I see. You know, we yeah, just we pick up empathy. on it. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah. and yeah. what yeah. what yeah. advice would you give like to an, a young woman in sales? She's in a new environment. Maybe she's on a sales floor. There's a bunch of people there. Like, how can she get just a little bit better? How can she stay focused? How can she stay like mentally there when it feels like almost overwhelming with all the new stuff? Like, what would she do? Well, first, I would suggest uh, there are some online groups that are really encouraging for women that in sales roles that you can join, such as one that's simply called Women in Sales, mm -hmm. and it's run by Alexine Muduar. Um, they have a, a, a um, Slack channel, and oh, they have cool. events, as well as there's Women in Revenue that has a Slack channel. There's Women in Sales everywhere. On my Women's Sales Pros website on our blog, we have a list of all these different groups. And Samantha McKenna has one uh, for women that they do like a quarterly call where they talk about different topics and it's all off the record. You know, people can say it's a safe space. And I think that's really important to do. So find a group that yeah. or a community that, that resonates for you. And then, you know, learn to develop who you are and speak your, you know, develop your voice at mm. work so that you aren't waiting to be tapped on the shoulder. If you know that you want to be a sales leader, eventually you let your boss know or yeah. your boss's boss and, you know, build a career and, and learn from others. Like I said, success leaves clues. So find people, whether they're in your company or outside of your company that are doing what you want to do eventually and, and model their behavior. Hmm. Lori, why have you wanted to help so many people? Because it sounds like you're like, I'm on this board, I'm on this board, I do this, I help this, I have this, you know, and I absolutely love that. I think that that's so fulfilling. And I think it's such a admirable quality about who you are and the leader that you are and the way that you want to give back. Like what has been the big driver here to be able to do this? You know, is it just entertaining or like when do you see that spark because I, I know that sometimes when we help in environments like that like there's that like one student or that one person that we can help facilitate or we can help connect that just like makes all of it worth it like what's the thing that makes all of it worth it for you what's that aha moment for you when I was little I wanted to be a teacher and okay. I became a teacher but I couldn't afford it so <laughs> yeah. then I got into sales and so I get to be a te teacher now and so I want people to learn from my mistakes. I want to see more women in sales. I just have this passion to, to see um, sales reflect who our society is mm. and how I want it to look like who our buyers are. Yeah. And, and so we need to, you know, really keep that, keep that focus and it just drives me. So mm -hmm. that's why I end up speaking to different people and, and it keeps me young, you know? Yeah. It's a, uh, it keeps me learning and I, I learn from everybody every day. I learn from my clients. I learn from the women that I'm talking to and, and the, the male allies that we have. Mm -hmm. And I love that you talk about guys too, about like increasing male leadership, having male awareness of what's going on. I think that versus us just complaining, we like actually are saying solutions of what we could do better and how we could help. Um, you know, I think the only last thing is like, what industries, what industries do you think Cause like for me, like I have some women in tech. I also have women that, um, you know, are in some like, um, I don't know if it would be still tech, but a lot of software, I have a lot of software companies, a lot of SaaS companies, um, cold calling SaaS companies, um, a lot of AI. I've been seeing that too. New AI companies of how to like restructure stuff, um, especially for like the medical field, um, as well as. What other company was it? It was like a computer company that they were calling on these different computer companies and helping. Like, what do you see like the biggest yeah. like new space to go in that's like a, a solid deal? Like if I'm in sales, maybe I've been in there for a while or maybe I'm brand new. Like what industry do you feel like is the easiest to have like the most upside as fast as possible? Sometimes you have to build a book of yeah, business. Probably not tech time. right now because of all the things that tech has gone through and layoffs and, yeah. you know, turnover and there's a lot going on in tech. So I look at some of the other more traditional 
male industries like the building trades and mm. you know some of them are have so many opportunities for women where you could rise as a leader in so many different companies and these are some of the companies i talk with that are in the building trades they're manufacturing distribution companies mm. um, companies in the channel even with tech there's a lot of opportunities and then biotech um telecommunications wow. so many so many yeah. opportunities that's a great thing is that you can do you can find a, an industry that you really love and really mm. dive into it so cyber security you know that's another yeah, one that's, that's really true. growing really really growing for any else anyone else that's listening on here Lori, like what would be one piece of advice or one thing that you would want to leave with them maybe a woman here is like man i wish i could be like that one day I want to be like Lori, you know, and I feel like they don't know that it takes a long time. You know, it's like, oh, what is it on my microphone? Continuously like, like building yeah. and growing. Like it's not an overnight, right, like right. Rome wasn't built overnight. Yeah. Like it's a continuation. They one, one, one day want to be in your shoes, like on boards and like speaking yeah. at universities. Like what advice would you give yeah. that woman that is so hungry? Yeah, it's, but it's, taken, like... it's been a journey. It's taken time to get here. I, my piece of advice is that if, if, if you're not in sales, uh, if you try sales out even for a couple of years, uh, it only helps you for, let's say you become an entrepreneur. You, you need to know mm -hmm. how to sell your, your services <laughs> and products. Or if you work for a company and you want to rise within the ranks, you're going to be selling your ideas. So learning how to sell is a really good thing for people to, to do. And there's really no downside because the things we learn in sales are things for our life. Mm. They're, they're, they're lifelong skills on how to get along with others and yeah. how to treat people with respect and how to be res feel respected yourself. And they're, they're all really important things. So I, I would say that would be really important. And, and then find people you can talk to and learn from and finding mentors and within a company, a sponsor who has power mm. that can help you speak about you when you're not in the room, mm. those kinds of things. And, and just learn as much as you be a sponge. Like I've always been. Mm. What do you mean by that? A sponge? Just, just absorb all, you know, learn, be a lifelong learner and learn yeah. at every, don't assume that you know the everything is when we do that in sales, that's a killer. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, we never know everything because we're in a people business and people change and business changes. And so we need to adapt and learn all the time. So if you have that growth mindset, mm -hmm. it, that can really take you a long way. Amazing. Well, you know, I think that there's so many of us that are continuously just wanting and craving women just like you, Lori, that are, are really standing up for what is possible for women in business, women in sales, to do it in a way that feels in alignment with your values. You talk a lot about leadership and, and how important it is for us to lead ourselves, lead others, right? And do this with all, with integrity. You know, there's nothing in your conversation that ever was like, oh, well, like, you know, you have to like rise up to the top by being sneaky or manipulative. Like there's been nothing of that. It's all consistent leadership and growing. And I think that it's so important for us to pave the way for other people to do it. So again, thank you so much for being on here today. Um, for any ladies, you know, to be able to find you, right, and connect with you. Uh, again, you know, I think that your your links, we're going to put them in the post here, but it's womensalespros.com, also the she sells summit.com. When do y'all do your summit? Yeah, um, I've done three of them so far, and I don't have another one planned for this year, but we could do one at the end of the year, or it'll be the first of next year. Okay, and cool. right now what I'm trying to do is really support everybody else's events and mm -hmm. not, I don't want to compete with our own at women's sales pros we we support all the other women in sales groups and want mm -hmm. to amplify them amazing well where would be the one place if anyone wanted to connect with you where can they find you LinkedIn and reach out to connect and say that you heard this uh, episode because I got a lot of LinkedIn requests and there's a bunch waiting for me to <laughs> react on so if you say something if you like, give me a good message I'll probably accept it before any of the others. All right, perfect. Well, ladies, you heard it from here to you. Um, we just honor you and I appreciate you for listening. And, you know, you have every single thing inside of you to figure it out, you know, and, and learning how to be a sponge, knowing that you don't know everything and that there is people out there that are continuously dedicated to provide assets and opportunity for you to grow and for you to step into 
you know, the abilities that you have, the opportunity that you have. So Lori, again, thank you so much for being on here today. Thank you, ladies, and we will see you on the next episode.